it's time to actually start doing. Let's set up WordPress. First, we're going to have to choose a domain name, which is a professional URL, as I'm sure you already know, laurenholiday.com, for example. And you're going to need hosting, which is a service um, provider that connects your site to the internet using your domain name. Website hosting is kind of like rent for your brick and mortar business, except it's online rent. You must pay to have a space of your own online, just as you have to pay a fee to a landlord. Depending on which hosting provider you choose, hosting will cost you a recurring monthly fee of $6.99 or less, or an annual fee of less than $100. Use the coupon code I copied below to get managed WordPress hosting for just $12 a year with GoDaddy. You'll also get a free domain name. Why purchase a domain name? Owning your own domain name looks far more professional than having your site on someone else's domain like yourbusiness.wordpress.com and it's super affordable so there's zero reason why you shouldn't do this. Another huge reason to purchase your own domain name is because you'll be able to get your very own email like that you own. That's huge. I rarely respond to people or even see emails in my inbox sent from generic accounts like something like AOL or Yahoo. Gmail's okay. Um, if you or your client already own a domain name, you can skip ahead. Where do I purchase a domain name and hosting? In this course, we're going to purchase hosting with GoDaddy because their support's fantastic and it's cheap and user-friendly, so it's easy to learn. I'll also buy my domain from GoDaddy as well because it's easier to buy your domain from your hosting provider, plus they give it to you for free with that code I give you. So you're going to want to choose a domain that's brandable. For example, if your site is about poetry, then bestpoetrywebsite.net is not a good choice. Poetryacademy.com or Poetryfall is much cooler. Is it memorable? Short, punchy, and clear domain names are much easier to remember. If your domain is too fuzzy, too long, or spelled in a strange way, visitors may forget it. Catchy. You want a domain name that rolls off the tongue and describes what you do. Coming up with a cool name can be a bit tough since there are <laughs> a lot of domain names out there that are already registered, but don't give up because you definitely, they're out there. You can still find some gems. More tips. Keep it short. Keep your name short and memorable. One or two words is best. Keep in mind that the top 100,000 websites on average have nine characters in their domain names. Make it easy to type and spell. Finding a domain name that's easy to type is critical to online success. If you use slang like you, the letter, instead of Y-O-U, or words with multiple spellings like express versus X-P-R-E-S-S, -S, <laughs> it might be harder for your customers to find your site. I've learned this the hard way with freelanceship. It, people say freelanceship, and I'm like, no, freelance ship. <laughs> and they're like, well, you spelled it freelanceship. So yeah, don't try and be cool like me. <laughs> so avoid numbers and hyphens. You want to try and stick with .com for the familiarity factor. Use keywords, maybe, if you don't care as much about being brandable. So what are people searching for? Um, use those search queries to help you decide on a domain name. You can look for keywords that describe the business or the services they offer. For example, if it's a glass replacement business, you may want to register glassrepair.com or glassreplacement.com. I'm sure those might not be available, but I mean, you can just try. Um, you just want to look for keywords that people are entering into Google when they search, which you can find with like Moz or Ahrefs or something like that. It helps improve your rank on search engines too, which increases traffic, and it just makes sense to make more like mainstream customers. But what if your domain name is taken? It's probably likely that someone already owns or is selling the domain of your liking since there's approximately 150 million active domain names in the world currently. If someone already owns the .com address or if the domain you want is up for auction at a cray cray price, then you need to think creatively. Pocket is a good example of a wildly popular startup that got creative when their domain name was taken. The Read It Later app purchased Get Pocket and users find it just fine. And I've also seen a lot of different startups do that. If you're building a website though for a startup, you can veer outside the .com box and purchase a .io domain name, which are becoming increasingly popular or another cool extension. Like for instance, if I named this course College Dropout, I could have gotten college.dropout, which is almost like an exact match domain. For small businesses, I'd stick with .com every time since their customers and prospects are more, most likely more traditional. So get creative with a small business's domain name might require you to research search queries like with Moz or something. So you might want to look for that as opposed to the business's name. 
When I have this problem, I use a domain name generator such as agiledomainsearch.com, which is so legit. You got to check it out. It's badass. You literally like enter a keyword in the um, in like the space bar and it pops up all the domains with that word in it. It's pretty sick. Hopefully by now you'll know what domain you want to get or you will soon and you can hit pause. Um, but I'm going to walk you through the process for signing up for GoDaddy and getting hosting and all that good stuff. So go to GoDaddy.com, go to WordPress, go to WordPress hosting, go to configure the $3.99 a month, continue, enter the domain you want for free. I made up a stupid domain, unicorns love me. You should see all the domain names I have that are have unicorn in it. Select and continue. And then you wanna choose 12 months. Don't worry, that price will go down. Add your promo code that I give you down below. Yay, $12 from 84. I think that's pretty badass. And then just remove the email starter thing and proceed to check out. I'm just going to log into my account. Place my order. And go to manage WordPress. One credit's available. Next. I'm building a brand new site. And you can pick a domain name or you can pick a temporary domain name. I would pick the temporary domain name because you don't want this online yet. You don't want it to be indexed or anything like that until you're ready. And I wasn't lying about the unicorns, you can see. Um, so we'll go to use a temporary domain name. And then next, North America. And then choose a WordPress username and password. A really secure one because GoDaddy's annoying. I hate these things. This makes me always forget my password. Install. And now go to get uh, go to dashboard, and then we're going to go to WP Admin, which will take me to my back end of WordPress, my WordPress dashboard for my new site. Now you're going to want to remember this uh, link. No thanks. Okay. Get rid of these widget things that annoy me. I love it. Minimal and clean by going to screen options and unchecking those. Then we're going to go to plugins, install plugins, and remove the ones that were installed with it. So we're going to deactivate the WP101. We're going to check the GoDaddy and the WP101, and then delete and apply. Next, we'll go to settings. And we'll go to permalinks, and then we'll click post name, and this changes your URLs. Save changes. Now you're going to want to bookmark this link, your temporary domain and the wp-admin so you can log back into your site later. Now let's purchase your theme and install it. So we're going to go to Theme Forest, and we're going to type in Jupiter, and we're going to pick the top result. Make sure it's that image. And you would just 
uh, buy now where it says extend now and save because I've already bought it. Once you do that and purchase it or create an account, you'll go to downloads from the drop down menu right there where your name is and you'll click the arrow button and you'll download all files and documentation. Next, we'll go to Appearance, Themes, Add New, Upload Theme, Choose File, and you're going to extract that zip file. It's going to have a child, Jupyter child theme, and then a Jupyter, a Jupyter zip file. Install the Jupyter.zip first. Install now. Wait for that baby to upload. Click activate. I allow tracking because I think it gets rid of bugs. Skip tutorials. Themes again. We're going to go back to appearance themes. And we're going to go to add new. And we're going to upload theme. Choose file. And this time we're going to choose the child theme. What we're doing here is, is you want a child theme because that saves your like CSS and code like changes so you never know when you're gonna need it. Click activate and then you'll have both themes in there but the child theme is what you want to be active which we just activated. Next we need to register our product so we need to uh, you need to click the sign up button right there And you're going to fill out an account, create an account. And so I'm going to log in. I'm going to go to register product. And as you can see, I've already registered a shit ton of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, back to theme forest and I'm going to download the license certificate and purchase code. I'm going to open that baby up and I'm going to copy and paste the item purchase code. And I'm going to put that here, submit, and I'm going to copy the RP's API key highlighted in yellow. You're probably going to have to refresh like I did. And then you're going to drop that right there. Yay, we're registered. And then I'm just going to show you how to do a support ticket real quick. You're going to go to your profile picture in the right-hand corner, click Dashboard. Or not, to, uh, Tickets, I meant. <laughs> I could have just went to the left-hand side and cut that part. New ticket. And then the product you're using, you're just going to fill out this form. It's really self-explanatory. Put in a subject. Give them as much information as possible. Give them the login to your site. Give them everything because the faster you do this, the faster your problem gets resolved. So whenever you have a theme-like issue, come to Jupiter. Their support is fucking phenomenal. It deserved a fucking. <laughs> now let's talk about how I knew Jupiter was a good theme. It's by a power elite author, which is badass. It means you're like the top of the top of the top. You're number one. 81,000 sales. Holy shit. That means really good. Item rating 4.73 out of 4,038 uh, 4, ratings. That's a lot. It was last updated in December. Good. Created a long time ago. So they're like really, there's support behind it. It's compatible with all browsers. It's well documented and it's responsive. This theme's a good theme. You just never know sometimes with WordPress themes. In the next video, we're going to talk about your WordPress dashboard. Get ready.